Hi, this is Julie Hester, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to read data from files where some of the data has embedded spaces. I'll begin by talking about the CSV file format. Then I'll show you how to use GitLine with input files, how to convert string data to integers and doubles, and I'll finish up with an example. Sometimes our data is written in what's called a comma-separated value file. And these files can end with .csv or .txt. They're basically just text files, but we have a comma between each field in the file. And the last field in each record doesn't have a comma, it just has an end of line or return. CSV files are easy to create. If you have an Excel spreadsheet, you can save it as a CSV file, and Excel will save it as a text file with commas between each column. For the examples that I'm using in this video, I'll be using this file items.csv. This file has three records. The first field is a string, which does have spaces embedded in it. It's followed by a comma and an integer, a comma and a double. So how do we read strings with embedded spaces? We have the same issues as when we're working with CN on the console line. As soon as CN or our file stream variable sees a space, it's going to interpret that as the end of the variable. So instead, we'll use the getLine function to read each field in as a string. When we use getLine, we'll specify the delimiter for all fields except the last one. So here, I'm using getLine to read from input file. I'm going to save the data that I read into string variable temp, and I'm going to read through the comma and discard the comma. When I get to the last field in the record, then I'll use the default delimiter. So I won't even specify a delimiter when I call get line this time. The default delimiter is the end of line marker. Now, because get line only reads data into string variables, we'll have to convert our numeric data from strings to integers and doubles. We'll read the numeric data in as a string, and then we'll either use the s to i or s to d function to convert the string to an integer and a double. And you can remember the name of these functions if you think about what they're an abbreviation for, string to integer and string to double. So I'll create two variables. One is a string that's going to temporarily hold the data value, and then the integer that I want to convert it to. I'll call getLine from my input file. I'm going to save the integer in the string variable temp, reading up through the comma. Now I have a number that's saved as a string. I can convert that to an integer by calling the s to i function with the string as the parameter. s to i with temp will convert the value in temp to an integer, and then it'll be assigned to quantity. So here's how we can read the items.csv file. Because I'm working with one field at a time, or reading one field at a time, I'm going to check for the end of field, end of file flag as my while loop test condition. So as long as I'm not at the end of the file, I'm going to call get line to get the next item, or the next field, which will be the first field of the current record. The first field happens to be a string, so I'm going to save it in string variable item, reading through the comma, and I'll discard the comma. 
Then I'll read the next field in the file, which is an integer. So I'm going to read it into variable temp and follow that with a conversion of s to i or string to integer and save the converted value and quantity. Then I'll read the third and final variable also into temp. This variable is a double and because it's the last field on the record I don't need to specify the delimiter. Git line will use the default of the end of line marker. And as soon as I read in temp, I'm then going to convert it to a double by calling s to d and save that converted value in variable price. Now I've read three fields in the current record and I can display the values for the record or add them to a vector or whatever I want to do for processing them. But now I have one other thing that I have to do. I need to know if there are any more records. And I won't know if there are any more records until I attempt to read the file. But I don't really want to read the file until I'm reading it into item. So instead I'm going to call another function called peak. And when I call peak, input file will look at what the next character of the file is. And if it is at the end, then it will set the EOF bit flag. And now I'll know I'm at the end of the file. But if I'm not at the end of the file, I haven't really read any of the data. So the data is still ready to be read. So in summary, we saw how CSV files have commas between each field except the last, how GitLine works with files just like with CN, how all fields are read into a string variable. So for our numeric data, we can convert it to integers and doubles using S to I and S to D. And then finally, we saw how the peak function can look at a file to see if we're at the end of the file.